Hi, welcome to Random Walk with a Varying Step Size, Qualitative Discussion. In a few videos on this channel, we've looked at random walks. Here, we'll look at a random walk with varying step size. We'll see that the probability distribution for the position of an object undergoing such a random walk resembles a Gaussian, or normal, distribution after just a few steps. This will be useful for us later to understand why measurement uncertainties are often taken to be Gaussian distributed, or normally distributed. We'll leave the math out of this video and just discuss things on a qualitative level and look at some plots. This video will assume that you have a little bit of familiarity with a random walk at the level of the discussion in the video Qualitative Description of the Random Walk. On the other hand, if you've watched the other videos on the random walk available on this channel, you're more than equipped for this video. So, in the video Qualitative Description of the Random Walk, we showed some plots of the probability for an object undergoing a random walk to end up at a given location after n steps. The object started at the location x equals 0 and took steps of size 1 unit either toward plus x or toward minus x. We'll quickly review some examples. So here we show the probability distribution for the location of the object after n equals 5 steps. So the object can be located at x equals plus or minus 1, x equals plus or minus 3, or x equals plus or minus 5. The object is much more likely to be at x equals plus or minus 1 than at x equals plus or minus 5. And here we show the probability distribution after 10 steps, so n equals 10. So here the object can have a location of x equal to any even integer between minus 10 and 10, but it's much likelier to be near the middle of the distribution. So in the video Qualitative Description of the Random Walk, we also saw that for large n, the probability distribution starts to resemble a Gaussian. So, for example, here we show the probability distribution for the location of the object after 100 steps, so n equals 100. Again, we show the exact results in blue. But we've also drawn in a Gaussian distribution in red, and we can see that the red Gaussian is a very good approximation to the tops of the blue bins. Okay, so now let's do something slightly different. In the previous discussion of a random walk, we had a uniform step size. Every step was either one unit toward minus x or one unit toward plus x. Now we'll vary the step size. We'll keep the average step size at one unit, but we'll let it vary from zero to two. So, at each step, the object will move toward minus x or toward plus x with equal probability. The step size will be chosen independently for each step from a uniform distribution between 0 and 2. This means, for example, that the probability for the step size to be between 0.0, .0 and 0 0.1 is the same as the probability for it to be between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 or the probability for it to be between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, etc. So we'll simulate the motion of the object using toy experiments. For each of these experiments, we imagine the object taking n steps. For each step, we generate a random number to give a step size between 0 and 2 and a direction toward either plus x or minus x. After n steps, we'll note where the object ends up. We'll do this 100,000 times and plot the results. Because these results are simulated using random numbers, there is a degree of randomness to the results, so you'll see occasional bumps, 
in other words, statistical fluctuations in the plots. So here we show the probability distribution for n equals 5. We've also drawn in a Gaussian distribution in red. Now, previously, with a constant step size of 1, we couldn't see the Gaussian behavior until we got to large n. So for example, on the left, we show the case for n equals 5, which doesn't look very Gaussian, and on the right, we show the case for n equals 100, which looks nicely Gaussian. However, with the varying step size, the Gaussian behavior is evident even for n equals 5. And here we show the result for the case n equals 10 compared to a Gaussian distribution in red. And we can see that the Gaussian approximation is working really well. OK, now let's take this a step further. We'll still vary the step size, but we'll also vary the average step size from one step to the next, but in a well-defined way. We'll do a few examples. Again, we'll do toy experiments and plot the results. For all of these, we will take n equal to 5. OK, let's start with our first example. We'll take the step sizes to be as follows. On the first step, we take the average step size to be 1.3, uniformly distributed between 0 and 2.6. On the second step, we take the average step size to be 1.5, uniformly distributed between 0 and 3.0. And we similarly take the step sizes of the third, fourth, and fifth steps to be 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and 0 0.8, respectively. These numbers are chosen to be not too different from the average step size of 1 used in the previous example. OK, so here we show the probability distribution for the location of the object for n equals 5 with average step sizes of the five steps being 1.3, 1 1.5, 1 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and 0 0.8, respectively. And again, we draw in a Gaussian distribution in red. Uh, let's make a quick point. The experts in the audience might be wondering how we're choosing the width of the Gaussians in these plots. We've chosen the standard deviation sigma of the Gaussian distribution to be the same as the standard deviation of the simulated data in blue. Additionally, for these examples, we've chosen the numbers so that sigma will be very close to or equal to the standard deviation in the case where all of the steps had an average size of one unit. This way we can easily compare the plots. If you're not familiar with the Gaussian distribution, that's okay. All you need to know is that there's a parameter sigma which controls the width of the Gaussian, and we've chosen it reasonably here. Okay, let's get back to the plots. Okay. So let's compare the case where we always had an average step size of 1, shown here on the left, to the case where we varied the average step size, shown here on the right. The Gaussian approximation is pretty good in both cases, but if you look closely, you'll see it's not quite as good for the case of varying average step size in the plot on the right. So in the plot on the right, we can see that the red Gaussian curve is a bit above the blue bins, both in the middle of the plot and in the extreme tails. And the red curve is falling a bit below the blue bins in other parts of the plot. OK, now let's do the same thing again, but with average step sizes of 1.7, 1.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and 0 0.1 for steps 1 through 5, respectively. We've chosen these numbers to be a bit farther away from one and a bit farther away from each other than in the previous case. Let's see what happens in comparison to the previous two examples. 
Okay, so let's compare the three cases. The newest example is given on the right. We can see that the Gaussian approximation in the third plot is not as good. The red Gaussian curve, again, is too high in the middle of the plot and in the extreme tails, and it's too low on the sides of the peak. Nonetheless, the Gaussian approximation is still doing what would be a pretty good job for many purposes. Okay, let's try one more example. Here we'll use average step sizes of 2.0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 .5, and 0 0.5 respectively for the five steps in the process. Here, the first step is quite a lot larger than all of the others. Let's see what happens. So here we show the probability distribution for the position of the object for n equals 5 with average step sizes of 2.0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5, respectively. And we see in this case that the Gaussian approximation is significantly failing to describe the blue data. So let's see what's happening here. So the average step sizes were 2.0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. Because the first step on average is much larger than all of the others, the final location of the object after the n equals 5 steps is largely determined by the first step. The object typically takes one large step to the right or left and then takes four small steps around that location. So the distribution after all five steps is starting to somewhat resemble the distribution after the first step, which is a flat distribution between minus 4.0 and plus 4.0. So we've seen here that the Gaussian approximation works really well if all of the steps have similar typical sizes. And the Gaussian approximation starts to fail if one or a small number of steps have sizes typically much larger than the others. Okay, so let's summarize. We've looked at a bunch of plots that look Gaussian to varying degrees. We've seen that if we have a random walk with a randomly varying step size, the probability distribution resembles a Gaussian after only a few steps, as long as the typical step sizes are all similar. On the other hand, if one or a few of the steps are much larger than the others, the Gaussian approximation doesn't work as well. We'll use these results to understand measurement uncertainties and show why measurement uncertainties are often modeled using a Gaussian distribution in other videos.